Hello, and thank you for joining. My name is Valerie Vasquez. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of California, Berkeley. And my talk today is Introducing GeneDrive.jl, a package to simulate and optimize biological interventions. So to begin at the beginning, I'll explain why I built this package and what broadly its original intent was. So my doctoral work focuses on the environmental drivers of human health. And from the human from the health side, I seek to inform the genetic technologies that are used to prevent mosquito-borne diseases. When I say genetic technologies or genetic tools, I'm talking about those that alter the genes of species or change the expression of certain traits. From the environmental side, I concentrate on the dynamics of different mosquito species under temperature change and how those shifts can alter disease spread. So what I sought in building this software was both a computational tool that could characterize organismal dynamics using the best available science and to help define the optimal that is the best means of vector population management and thus risk reduction from a human health perspective. So at its core, this package is a population model defined over a network and designed to address these dual needs that I had in my research. The name is a nod to one type of tool currently under laboratory development, which can be explored using the software. Though, as I'll demonstrate shortly, the applications of the package are by no means limited to this novel technology of gene drive. I defined genetic tools on the previous slide as technologies that directly alter the genes of a species or change the expression of certain traits. And this can be done through a variety of means, including genetic modification, but it also includes approaches that use radiation or artificially introduce pathogenic microorganisms like bacteria. And you may or may not be surprised to know that genetic tools are already being deployed. Um, these headlines on the screen underline the real world applications of the software I'll be presenting today. And all but one concerns tools with ongoing and widespread trials. These tools include Wolbachia, a bacterial infection that blocks mosquitoes' ability to spread pathogens, and Riddle, an engineered suppression technology. So experimenting with more mature genetic technologies like these in silico, we can complement the findings of ongoing laboratory and field studies. And in the case of novel gene drive approaches, we can use software to safely explore possibilities before moving outside the laboratory. So with that context, here's what to expect from the talk today. First, I'll outline the fundamentals of the software, which is designed as a three-part framework and draws on some fantastic uh, Julia features. For each part of the framework, I'll furnish an example of a scientific question that motivated an important technical design choice. And I'll close with a case study to demonstrate one field relevant application of the software. Part one of the GeneDrive.jl framework is its data model, an abstraction that uses the Julia type system to define simulation inputs, store them, and dispatch methods. Part two is the dynamic model, an ordinary differential equation formulation of the biological system that builds on differential equations.jl. Part three is the decision model, which discretizes the OD ODE formulation to create a nonlinear mathematical program for optimization and uses jump. Now, a unique feature of the GeneDrive.jl package is how this framework structure enables the explicit separation of simulation and solving algorithm. So once constructed using the data model, problem specifications can be solved using either dynamic or optimization methods and even iterating between these two options. The first step in any empirical effort is to clean and organize the data. This is also true for computational experiments. So the data model component of GeneDrive.jl uses structs in the Julia type system to standardize the organization of information and encode relationships between model inputs. By enforcing consistency in the specification of data across computational experiments, the data model facilitates reproducibility and data sharing. The modularity it enables promotes code reuse as different research questions or focal areas are studied, so required inputs can be swapped out accordingly. By prioritizing composability, the idea is to enable the software to evolve along with scientific discovery and incorporate iterative updates in a straightforward way. The data model includes details that are both exogenous and endogenous to study populations. So these features, which may be assembled and augmented in a building block fashion to develop many unique scientific explorations, are encapsulated in thematic components, namely organismal, geographic, climatological, and anthropogenic. And the panels of the figure here visualize the nested nature of these data model components. 
So to motivate the technical design choice um, of using Julia Strux and Dispatch, um, we'll take a look at one example application wherein two different disease vector species, Aedes aegypti and Anopheles gambiae, are modeled using GeneDrive.jl. Each species is defined by a type within the model, dispatching unique functional responses to temperature change that have been calibrated using empirical data. So here we have both species modeled over the same time frame of one year using the same temperature inputs representative of a temperate southern hemisphere and beginning from the same initial population size. And we see that the count um, of one species, the Anopheles, increases during the cooler months in the middle of the year while the other decreases. And this gives us insight into the shifting disease risk in this hypothetical scenario. Now, moving on to the second part of the framework, the dynamic model. This piece is a mathematical representation of continuous time population dynamics using ODEs. And it's a meta population model, meaning that it can accommodate multiple discrete populations connected via bi directional migration. Um, and the equations of the dynamic model, of which these are some examples, are applicable across metamorphosing species. Their stage structures, such that each, all organisms within a particular life stage, are assumed to be equal with respect to their birth, death, and maturation rates. And those organism characteristics are specified by the values populating the data model. So this approach to parameterization is an important aspect of the empirically informed logic governing GeneDrive.jl's design. The data model establishes an experimental record of the parameters used to initialize a simulation. And these values can then be perturbed in a reproducible way, as I'll demonstrate in a moment. So to explore that last point um, a bit more, I want to highlight a functionality of the differential equations.jl platform upon which GeneDrive.jl is constructed. Namely, values may be updated over the course of continuous real-time simulation using discrete callbacks to the solver, as explained by the information flow diagram here. Um, and those callbacks facilitate experiments that explore the effect of exogenous perturbations to the biological system being modeled. So it opens the possibility for new scientific questions to be asked. Um, and one example use case um, is introducing a new organism type into the simulation after it has been initialized. So simulating species invasion. Another is um, abruptly altering the environmental conditions to which simulated organisms are responding. So demonstrating climate change. And ultimately, this functionality just supplies another unique characteristic of the framework presented here. And just because I'm tangentially mentioning solvers, I want to take the note of another advantage stemming from the differential equations.jl platform, um, namely the continued composability that's enabled by being able to pick from a robust suite of available solution methods. So the technical design we've just been focusing on um, of callbacks is motivated here by an example uh, scientific application where we examine the effect of temperature perturbations on organismal dynamics. So first, just for visual explanatory purposes, we establish the baseline dynamics using a simple sinusoid representation of temperature as the input um, with the dotted green line in the figure representing the um, organism responses to that temperature. And then we define the timing of our desired temperature change and establish its magnitude and directionality, so negative or positive, right, so hot or cold, and then we simulate and analyze the delta from the baseline at those perturbation points. Um, and we see the impact on vector dynamics from a two degree Celsius temperature increase for five days, a five degree increase for two days, and a three degree drop in temperature for three days. And this just so showcases one way this design choice can be applied toward a hypothetical scientific study. The decision model that constitutes the third piece of the GeneDrive.jl framework um, is a nonlinear mathematical program, and it's written in the extensively developed domain-specific language embedded in Julia called JUMP. It's implemented by discretizing the dynamic model system of ODEs using the Euler approximation method and a daily time step. So in terms of constraints in the model, um, there are two varieties. First, um, the discretized population equations form the equality constraints. So the feasibility of a given simulation is, um, is, is informed by experiment-specific biological details. And like the dynamic model, the decision model parameters are populated by the data model values um, and equality constraints, such as the example um, on the screen there, are applicable to alternative species according to this parameterization. 
Second, uh, constraints representing non-biological or operational limitations, such as resource availability, enter the model as inequality constraints. And these can include, for example, a restriction on the maximum or minimum number of intervention actions to be taken per day or over the full time horizon of the problem. And finally, the objective function, that is the goal that is being maximized or minimized, is flexibly specified by the user according to the problem at hand. So in this representative example on the right, I seek to minimize the number of disease vectors F, which are female mosquitoes, because they are the ones that bite and therefore spread disease, um, by releasing the minimal quantity of uh, modified organisms C. Um, in keeping with the composability and accessibility theme, JUMP can be used in conjunction with a wide array of solution algorithms, both free and commercial. Um, so gdrive.jl includes IPopt as a default nonlinear solver, and this can be augmented with additional algorithms to accelerate solutions or improve accuracy. Unlike the dynamic model, the information in the decision model simulation is evaluated once and over the full time horizon as depicted in the picture, in the picture here. Um, and we'll look at the implications of that in a moment, including how it informed another key design feature of the genedrive.jl software. Okay, so now this quick example illustrates the motivation behind including an optimization component as part of the genedrive.jl framework. So usually in public health contexts, interventions are designed based on the results of field work or expert opinion. And both of these things are very important but both of these options can also be expensive and include large possibilities for error. Another alternative is simulating uh, interventions using an ODE model. Um, but if, even if we model an intervention using an ODE, ODE simulation, there's no guarantee of optimality, right? So here, we're exploring the differences between simulating a hypothetical expert-informed public and health intervention and optimizing it. So first we define the genetic technology that we're interested in, Wolbachia replacement. We set the objective um, as that simple minimization seen earlier and define our operational constraints as deployments that can only begin on the 15th day of the year and are restricted to occur every 10 days thereafter. So on the right, we see the decision model output, which um, includes a mere three discrete trips to the field um, that were sufficient to achieve the objective and of these, only the first included a moderately sized deployment of about 300 organisms. So compare that to my ODE simulation results that were informed by this hypothetical expert opinion that I gave, which was loosely guided by existing literature in this area. And we see that the optimized version lowers disease risk earlier in the year and demands fewer resources, both in the sense of transportation to the field, so fewer discrete releases, and a smaller total number of organisms released. All right, at this point, we reviewed the three components of the framework and seems some of the rationale for the key technical design choices. Now we'll use a relevant case to explore testbed functionality of genedrive.jl, which enables iterative experimentation between the dynamic and the decision models, wherein the outputs of one constitute inputs of the other. So in this scenario, we're imagining a region with a recent dengue outbreak that requires um, a targeted intervention policy. Um, and it's important that this policy responds to both environmental and economic realities. Species of interest is the primary dengue vector, Aedes aegypti. The seasonal fluctuation of that vector is informed by temperate temperatures in the, in the Southern hemisphere. And the area of interest is a single concentrated area. So a node, no migration. And in terms of resource availability, economic limitations are manifest in the form of a small workforce. So decision makers favor a tool that requires the fewest possible releases over time. Um, and they would prefer that over, that over one that simply uses less material. So namely uh, releases fewer organisms. So recall that in the previous motivating example with Wolbachia um, in the decision model, we had a situation that met the environmental requirements of this region. It's the right species, the right seasonality, and the right geography. So we're gonna call the optimized schedule that was produced by that example, our policy option number one. Uh, this reduction level um, of, of vectors with a mere three deployments is the standard to beat. And exploiting the testbed functionality, we'll use the optimized schedule that we have on hand from Wolbachia, and we'll test it in the dynamic model under an alternative scenario 
using a different genetic tool and see what impact it could have on the vector population. And that new genetic tool that we're going to be using is gene drive. The gene drive we'll explore is a representative example of a single locus homing gene drive called HGD for short. And in the dynamic model simulation, uh, we'll hold all factors constant, right? So same species, seasonality, and geography. Even the way the gene drive works is the same as the Wolbachi example, both are replacement mechanisms, wherein the standing population is wholly substituted with non, uh, is wholly substituted. Um, but of course, despite this, this uh, similarity, this is in fact a new and different genetic system. And so we would expect slightly, if not vastly different dynamics. And in evaluating the results, we see that the schedule optimized for Wolbachia does not in fact achieve the same degree of population reduction when used for the HGD tool, um, as we can see by comparing the red and the purple dotted lines of uh, the Wolbachia results and HGD results respectively. So we return to the decision model and rerun it using a new reality, a reality in which we are optimizing from the, from the get-go uh, for the use of the HGD tool. So here we optimize the HGD system directly using once more all the same defining aspects of the problem, same species, seasonality, and geography. Again, it's the same replacement mechanism despite being a new genetic system. And the result using the same minimizing objective is a new but slightly different policy optimized for the new technology that still only requires only three discrete deployments. So we haven't done any better or worse than the Wolbachia option on that particular front, um, though we do see that these releases are consistently larger um, in size. And when we analyze the public health implications by comparing the Wolbachia and HDD effect on the wild population dynamics when each of those is optimized, we see that they are largely comparable, but they do differ slightly. So we're gonna call this our policy option number two. New technology, new schedule of deployments. So putting it all together, returning to our scenario so we can select between the two options, we recall that our economic reality was favoring the tool with the fewest discrete releases. And now we know that both technological options require only three when optimized using our model. Um, and so we move on to other factors, including perhaps the amount of material quantity that is used. But obviously, it's also important to evaluate um, the public health result, which, while comparable across both outcomes, does have trade offs from the perspective of the speed versus the duration of the intervention effect. So, this situation simply presents um, options to the decision makers um, as, as modeled by uh, the gene drive.gl software. So in summary today, we've talked about the GeneDrive.jl software and its three-part framework. Uh, we've seen a number of scientific examples to motivate some of the key technical designs in that software. And we've closed with a case study to illustrate a field relevant use of the package. So I'll end there. Um, thanks to those who just supported these, this work, specifically the Microsoft Research PhD Fellowship that's supporting the end of my doctoral studies. Uh, comments and questions are welcome.